Uh, so I trust you have your Bibles by now. Grab them and let's go to the gospel according to Mark chapter number nine. The gospel according to Mark <coughs> chapter number nine. And let's see what the word of the Lord would say to us today. Mark chapter number nine. And the word of the Lord reads Mark nine beginning at verse number 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And when they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Verse 21. And Jesus asked his father, how long ago is it since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the, the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried rent him sore and came out of him and he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose we'll end the reading of the word of the Lord right there um, but you know what let, let me lift up one thing very very quickly just before we finish reading Jesus said, verse 23, if you can believe all things are possible. Then he said to the Father, verse 25, uh, verse 24 rather, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the Spirit, saw the people rather coming together, he said to the Spirit, you dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him. And just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, therapy and deliverance. Therapy and deliverance. Therapy and deliverance. I, I, I want to start this conversation today uh, with a statement that may seem a little bit uh, off-putting or uh, maybe dissonant to what we currently operate in. Um, we, we grew up in uh, the old school generation. Uh, I am... Uh, fourth, fifth generation a Pentecostal believer, and uh, there were some things that just were not germane to our uh, ideology back in the day. We never talked about things like therapy. We never talked about going to a psychiatrist and going to a psychologist and, and things of that nature. Those things just were not a part of our vernacular and, and how we operated. As a matter of fact, in certain religious circles, it was taboo 
to talk about therapy and uh, we believe that Jesus was the answer for everything. And while I do believe that Jesus is the answer to any problem, I also believe that the Lord has given some very, very strategic understanding to man about the psyche, about the mind, about the emotions, things of that nature. So I'll make this statement with that as a preface, that some of us have not been delivered because we cannot or we will not face the reality of what we're presently in. Facing the issue requires having an honest conversation with the Lord and acknowledging the issue and to some degree even the origin of the issue. In other words, sometimes we can't be delivered because we refuse to talk about it. We can't be delivered from an addiction because we refuse to talk about it. The Bible even says it like this, and I believe that, that this is a very, very important conversation for the church, especially during times of pandemic and isolation where people are dealing with issues in the mind and we have no respite from uh, the one space that we've been kind of confined to for an extended period of time is we need communication. We need uh, to identify with other human beings and we thank God for FaceTime and we thank God for uh, being able to Zoom and, and other video conferencing and things of that nature that give us the ability to communicate with other people. But man was constructed for conversation. He was constructed for interaction. And sometimes we miss points of deliverance because we have not acknowledged that we're in a particular place. So here it is, Revelations 12 and 11 says it like this. It says, we overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb, listen, and by the word of our testimony. We overcame there two components to deliverance and overcoming. One is we need the blood of Jesus. But secondly, there has to be some testimony, some, some uh, acknowledgement that a thing occurred and that we're beyond it. In other words, God ties, according to Revelation 12 and 11, he ties our deliverance to the blood and a confession, to the blood and a testimony, to the blood and a conversation. And I believe that some of us have missed profound movements and moments in God because what we've done is we refuse to acknowledge that we were bound by a thing. And you cannot be delivered from a thing that you have not acknowledged even exists. So here it is. I, I, I believe and I would uh, posit to you today that some of us need therapy. And I know that may be a little coarse. Some of us need to talk to somebody. Some of us need to have a conversation with some people who specialize in having conversations about issues. Now, here it is. I recognize that we still need the blood. I recognize that you cannot X Jesus out of the equation, but I also know that some of us, in our fear to acknowledge what we're dealing with, in, in our inability to acknowledge the issue, we actually confine ourselves to problems that we have the ability to be free from if we would literally give it to God. The Bible says, 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. God cares. He wants us to be free. He wants us to be delivered. He wants us walking in total and complete victory. He wants us to be more than a conqueror. That's part of the promise of God. He wants us to be overcomers. That's part of the promise of God. He wants us to have perpetual victory. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 says, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. 2 Corinthians says, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. So we know God wants us to be free. He wants us to be victorious. But he also knows that we cannot be free from what we won't confess. We can't be free from what we won't talk about. And I believe that God uses this particular scripture to remind us that a conversation comes with deliverance. Try it again. That, that, that colloquy comes with deliverance. That I have to talk about it if I'm going to be delivered from it. I can't hold it secret and be free from it. And Jesus literally shows us that particular methodology in the text. Because two things have to happen in this text. I believe that the son needs to be delivered, but the father needs therapy. Try it one more time. The son needs to be delivered from a demon and a devil, but the father needs to talk about it. Here's what happens in the text. The Bible says, and this is uh, subsequent to Jesus' 
uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. He comes down the mountain and he sees a crowd gathered around his disciples. And there's one man in particular who comes to Jesus and he says, I came to find you. Came to have a conversation with you about my son. My son is dealing with this devil that has possessed him. A dumb spirit has possessed my son. And uh, this spirit has literally taken control of my son's life. Here's what the man says. He says, when the spirit takes him, it tears him, he foams, he gnashes with his teeth, and he's wasting away, he pineth away. He said, I brought him to your disciples with the expectation that they had your power and they couldn't cast out the devil. And Jesus first has to acknowledge that there is a lack of faith in his constituency that his disciples should have been able to do it. His disciples should have been able to cast out the devil, but there was a disconnect in their faith. And Jesus even addresses it later because they said, Lord, why was it that we couldn't cast out the devil, but you could? And Jesus says something very key. He says, some of these only come out by fasting and prayer. Some of these only come out by fasting and prayer. There's a level of activation that happens in your life when you fast and when you pray. There's a level of power that is released to you when you fast and when you pray. So here it is. You have this, this man whose son needs deliverance, this man who's been dealing with this for an extended period of time, and watch this. The disciples failed to do what they really were responsible for doing, which is being the image of Christ in the earth. But watch this. Jesus says, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Bring the boy to me. Verse 20 says this, when they brought him to him, the spirit immediately recognizes the authority of Jesus. And the Bible says the spirit starts going crazy in the boy, throws him on the ground, and the boy starts foaming at the mouth, wallowing on the ground. And then Jesus does what I would consider in this text something that is unthinkable. Jesus does not immediately free the boy from the demonic possession. Now, I know that this probably goes against some of our ideology because we read the text and we say, where, where Jesus told the demon to come out, but Jesus does something before he casts out the devil. The Bible says that Jesus has a conversation before he performs deliverance. Let's try it again. Jesus has a conversation with the Father before he delivers the Son. Now, mind you, Jesus and the Father both are watching this devil tear his son apart. But Jesus, in verse 21, asks a very poignant question. He says, tell me, how long has it been since this thing came unto him? And he said, of a child. Now listen to the testimony of the Father. And oftentimes, it's cast him into the fire, into the water, to destroy him. Listen, this demon, this devil has been trying to kill my son for years. Listen, for years. And if you can do anything to help us, have compassion on us. Now watch this. This is so interesting because look at what happens in the text. The man, the father says, uh, when Jesus asked the question, how long has this been going on? He says, this started when he was a child. We don't know how old the child is, but we know that the, that the child is old, is much older than he was when this devil started messing with his son. So watch this. The father has had to be an advocate for his son who is being controlled by a devil. So watch this. This father had to, had to abdicate his life and responsibility for the sake of making sure that the devil doesn't kill his son. You got to understand now that the father has gone to the water to pull his son out of water. This father has had to deal with fire. Watch this. Not his fire but his son's fire. Not his water, but his son's water to save his son. Watch this. While the son has been possessed, the father has been suffering. Good God Almighty. Y'all got to grab a hold of this, that some of us right now are dealing with the trauma of people who are connected to us. It is not our problem. 
but because we're connected to people who are dealing with things, watch this, we're dealing with the same kind of trauma. So they're dealing with sickness, but while we're ministering to, ministering to them and helping them and aiding them and trying to get them healthy again, we're dealing with the same kind of trauma. And some of us right now need therapy and deliverance. We need the situation to be resolved, but we also need our minds to have peace. We need healing to occur, but we also need our emotions to be at rest. And God is saying in this hour that what he is releasing to that church to the world is both deliverance and therapy. He's, watch this. He's asking us very pointed questions to, to see, to signify to us where we are in this particular equation. Not just when did this thing start, not just the origin of this thing, but how has it affected you? How has dealing with this sickness messed with your mind? How has dealing with an unsaved spouse affected your ideology? How has dealing with long-standing issues impacted your ability to see God through an appropriate lens? Sometimes we need to have a conversation with the Lord and just tell him about what we're dealing with. Let me try that again. So sometimes we have to spend time just telling God, hear me. Even when we pray, we, we have uh, uh, unfortunately mislabeled and misrepresented prayer to the degree where people don't believe that prayer is a conversation with God. Sometimes we don't have to be deep. Kind Father, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, sometimes it's, Lord, I'm having a bad day. This is, this is rough for me. I'm struggling. Listen, I'm, I, I'm sick of the house. I'm sick of the fact that I can't go and sit at a restaurant and sit across the table from my friends. Those things were cathartic for me. Those were the, that, that was my release. I, 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 you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do a whole bunch of these other things, but I needed that interaction because that was where I found peace. That was where I found my equilibrium and those things have been taken away from me. I love going to the park and walking around the park, but the park is shut down. I, I, there were certain things that, that I, I, I used to enjoy, but I can't enjoy it right now and it's been messing with my my mind. God, I know you love me. I know you're for me. I know you're with me, but I need you to help me with the issue of my peace is starting to wane. I'm starting to feel a little bit crazy. I'm starting to go a little stir crazy. Cabin fever is starting to set in. I need to talk about what I'm dealing with. I know you're with me. I know you have the power to change this. I know you have the power to rescue me, but I also need you to hear my heart. I'm having a bad day. You're still good, but my day is wearing on me. You're still good, but I'm tired of this condition. You're still good, but I'm tired of this sickness. You're still good. The news is just bad news. Lord, I need you to help me. And Jesus says, listen, this is God responding to you. Jesus says, if you can believe, anything is possible. If you can believe. Somebody just type in the chat right, right, right quick to say, Lord, I believe. Listen, and it doesn't matter what you're believing for. I just need you to exercise your faith in this minute and just say, Lord, I believe. So watch this. Jesus says, if you can, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible. And the man says, I believe, but I got some doubt in me too. I, I, I trust you, but there are some places where my trust is a little bit weak. I, I know you got power, but I don't know if you have power for me. Uh, I know you can do it because there, there are times people have, have great faith for other people and little faith for themselves. And sometimes you can tell the Lord, Lord, I believe you have the power. I just don't know if I'm worthy. I don't know if I deserve it. I, I, I don't know if my life is measured up to the point where you can help me. But, and, but watch this. I love the, the admonition of the man. He says, I believe, but I need you to help me in the places where my faith is little. My faith is strong in some areas. It is non-existent in others. I need you to help me. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And the Bible says when the crowd now starts to gather because they've heard the story. They've heard Jesus, watch this, administer therapy. Now Jesus has to release deliverance. Watch this. Because once the man is able to acknowledge, I've been struggling while taking care of my son. I've been fighting to keep him alive. And this coming to you is, is, is my last ditch effort to ensure that my son stays alive because I am weary of being his rescuer, but I can't be his deliverer. 
try it again. I've learned how to rescue my son from the fire. I've learned how to rescue my son from the water, but I don't not know how to get him free. I know how, watch this, to bring him to a place where he is safe for a moment, but I don't know how to get him free. I want to communicate with him, but he's deaf and he's, and he's dumb. I want, I want to hear his voice again. I know what he used to sound like, but it's been years since we've had a conversation because his spirit has been controlling my son. I want that relationship back. It is something about a father and a son having communication, and when that communication is cut off, it impacts the father, and the father is hurt, not just because his son is going through, but because he is with his son, but he lost him at the same time. Good God Almighty. He, he's, he's able to see his son, but he's not able to hear his heart. He's able to see his son, but he doesn't know his passions and his dreams. He's able to see his son, but he doesn't know what his son wants to be in the future. And it has been wearing on him. And Jesus has to perform therapy for the father. Talk to me. Tell me about it. You may not have been able to share this with anybody, but when the crowd starts to gather, Jesus says, let me deal with the root of this issue because the reason why you need therapy is because your son needs deliverance. And the Bible says that the, the spirit, watch this, all this time is, is, has a son on the ground. He's wallowing. He's, he's shaking. He's rolling around on the ground. He's foaming at the mouth. So watch this. Jesus says to the spirit, you deaf and you dumb spirit, I charge you, come out of the boy and do not go back. Now, y'all miss a good place to shout hallelujah, to put some hands in the comments, to put some hearts in the comments, because I need you to understand what Jesus did for this son in this moment. He says, deaf and dumb spirit, I charge you, I command you to come out of the boy, wait, and do not go back. Good God Almighty. Y'all missed it one more time. He permanently freed this boy from the issue that he had been dealing with. It was not a temporary deliverance. It was not a momentary deliverance, but it was a permanent deliverance. This moment that this boy was in would now free him for the rest of his life. Come out and do not go back. Come out and do not return. Come out and don't touch him again. Come out and make sure his family stays free. Come out and don't send your friends back here either. Come out and let him be free for the rest of his life. Can you type this? I need you to say this to yourself. I know you can't talk to your neighbor, but say this to yourself. Say, this is the last time I'm dealing with this. Good God Almighty. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Somebody needs to holler out wherever you are, sitting in your room, in your kitchen, on your bed. Somebody holler out, this is the last time, good God Almighty, that I'm going to deal with this. The Lord is releasing you. He's taking it away. And he's not giving it permission to return again. This, good God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is the last day for you to deal with that problem because the Lord is not just getting rid of the devil. He's not just dealing with the origin of the thing, but he's dealing with the vestiges of it that is still in your mind, that's still in your heart. He's going to free you and make sure you stay free. But here's the, here's the tension in the text. I got to quit. Here's the tension in the text. The Bible says that the demon comes out. He thrashes the boy and he leaves the boy looking like he's dead. Watch this. He looks so dead that people believe he is dead. Hmm. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. The, the demon comes out of the boy. The boy is free. One more time. The demon is gone. He does not have permission to return. The boy is free, but he's still laying on the ground. Y'all, here it is. The boy, see, this is what the Lord told me. The Lord said he was resting because for the first time in years, he was finally free. He laid on the ground in peace for the first time in years. And peace looked like death to people who had only seen him and recognized him as a demon-possessed, deaf and dumb boy. Y'all missed it one more time. The boy laid on the ground in the place he got delivered from. He could have gotten up, but he laid there because it was the first time he had peace. The first time he had rest in years. Y'all missed it? Let me see if I can make this make sense for you. You're about to enter into a season where God gives you peace and rest 
for the first time for some of you in months. Some of us have been in angst. Some of us have been dealing with anxiety. Some of us have been dealing with paranoia. Some of us have been dealing with fear for months. But the Lord is saying, I'm bringing peace to your house, peace to your mind, peace to your children, peace to your environment. And I'm going to allow you to have peace rest. I'm going to allow you to recover. I want you to spend some time just laying down, resting in the fact that you are finally free. Somebody just say that, write that in the, in the chat, say, I am finally free. You are free. God is doing an amazing work in you. He's healing your mind through therapy and he's freeing your spirit through deliverance. He's healing your emotions and he's delivering you. He's not going to just bring you out and leave you with PTSD from the demonic activity that's been in your life. But God is going to free you and give you a testimony that God didn't just bring me out. He brought me out in a place of celebration knowing that the demon has no permission to come back ever again. If you believe that is true for you, I want you to take 10 seconds, lift up your hands wherever you are, and just begin to give God praise and glory that you've entered into a season where God has given you therapy and deliverance. He's healing your mind, your emotions. He's, he, he's cleansing the palate of, of your emotions so that you have nothing left that reminds you of your old state. The old is passed away and behold, all things are become new and it is so in the mighty and the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ if you receive that somebody just type in, in the chat say I receive that and it is so in Jesus name listen you, you might be under the sound of my voice you might be watching this video whether you're on Facebook on YouTube on the website where, wherever you may be watching and you're saying you know what I received that word that, that word is for me but I also acknowledge that there are some parts of my life that have never come into proper alignment with the Lord Jesus. I've never said yes to him. I've, I've never invited him to be my Lord and my Savior. I've, I've, I've never confessed my sins. This is a moment for you. This whole message was for you. Not to just bring you out to deliver you, but to bring you into deliverance. God never takes us out of a thing if he's not going to also take us into something else. He brought us out of darkness, the Bible says, into his marvelous light. If you desire to be in right relationship with the, God, with, with the Lord, listen, all it takes is a confession of faith. Believe it and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe your word that you died and rose just for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life and I'll serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just like that, it's that simple. Salvation begins at the point of your confession. But Jesus said it like this in John chapter number three, except a man is born of water and spirit, he or she cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I would invite you in this moment You've made that confession of faith. I would invite you right now to, to, to ask the Lord to fill you with his spirit, to invade your present environment, fill you with his spirit, and give you access into the kingdom of God. It's simple. It doesn't take a, a, a long process. It's simply about us receiving. The, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is a gift from God to us. And that means all I have to do is receive it, and he is mine he is yours. And I believe that your life has been transformed in this very moment. That God is with you and that the Lord is living in you. And it is so. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen, just before we end this broadcast, I want to invite you to partner with us. I want to invite you to, uh, to sow into this ministry, to share your resource with us. We believe that God is doing something very significant through the tabernacle, in our community, and for our constituency and I believe that the best is still yet to come but we also know that our ability to be a resource to our community to help others really it depends on your benevolence and your willingness to be able to share with our ministry there are multiple ways to give there's a screen up on, on right now on your screen uh, the, uh, that gives you 
uh, all of the information. You can text to give. You can uh, log into our website and give. If you're a member of the Tabernacle, you can log into your Fellowship One Go account, and you can give that way as well. Also, if you desire, you can even mail in your gifts. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. It all makes a difference in how we make an impact in the kingdom of God here at the Tabernacle. If you have that seat, listen, put your hand on your wallet, on your computer, on your phone, hold it up. Let's make this confession like we mean it. Say, this is my seed. I give it willingly and cheerfully. I'm expecting a supernatural harvest of blessings that is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. All my debt is paid. I will never be broke. Increase is coming to my life and the wisdom to handle it. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for what you've given, and we thank you for tuning in to the Tabernacle Online Worship Experience. We believe that God has something supernatural for you. I strongly believe that your life is going to change for the better not many days from now. The grace of God be on you. The joy of God be in you. Surely his victory has gone before you. And the peace of God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon.